I'm Edie Lush, and I'm here in the Hub Pavilion in Davos with Tina Williamson. She's the CEO of Above and Beyond. Thanks so much for coming along. Tell me what you're doing in Davos. Well, I'm actually here, here as a, a knowledge broker for the company Hub uh, Culture, which has a pavilion here in Davos. And uh, in short, doing knowledge brokerage is basically bringing like-minded um, parties, companies, individuals, entrepreneurs together um, and uh, executing strategic projects internationally. So tell me what your company is doing now. You've started it, you've, this is a departure from something you've done before. You've had 18 years in luxury brands. Tell me more about what Above and Beyond is, is all about. Well, exactly as you, you just mentioned, I have been uh, working for various luxury brands, uh, Diamond Business, De Beers, Bang & Olufsen, um, Aston Martin. And uh, after all these different years, um, I decided, first of all, to return to Copenhagen, which was something new for me, um, return to where I was born. And there I just saw an opportunity um, to create something that would give the consumers a, a new experience. So um, marketing is something everybody does, but inspirational marketing is, uh, is something I think that's needed in uh, the era we're going into. So basically our company is focusing on three things, design being a very important element, um, also because of the experience and the contacts I have. Uh, culture is then a very important element also, in the wider sense, working with artists, uh, working uh, with, with different mediums, uh, concerts and so on. And uh, the third level is, is corporate social responsibility. And when you combine all those three, it becomes quite an interesting synergy. And um, I think uh, that's a way to help corporations actually develop new products and services, um, which is innovative and which the consumers will find interesting. So you've got a slogan, expand, inspire, evolve. Tell me what that is about as well. Well, Above and Beyond is, is foremost doing business development for corporations and associations, sometimes NGOs. Um, but in addition to just grow, whether that's new consumers or new markets or inventing new products, um, we want to make sure also that inspiration is, is key. And that's not just uh, inspiring your consumers, it's also, in my opinion, you need to inspire your employees, uh, even your suppliers. And that way uh, you actually uh, are motivating people to come up with innovative new ways. Um, and that way you build emotion and excitement into your, your product and your service. And the last thing is obviously by doing all of that, uh, you evolve as a corporation. And um, I think it's very important as a company to, to have a purpose, basically, and, and what's being discussed here in Davos, uh, no matter who I talk to, whether it's CEO of, of large corporations or entrepreneurs, um, now it's all about taking responsibility uh, and giving back and, uh, and creating a, almost a new world order. And I think that's very exciting. There's a lot of new business models out there. The internet is helping a lot too. Mm -hmm. And uh, my company is, is trying to integrate um, as many of those new thoughts as possible and try to enable uh, corporations to, to move ahead. What did you learn in, in Copenhagen at the COP15 uh, conference as well? How is that influencing what you're doing? That was very interesting. Um, interesting uh, in many different ways. Obviously, the whole world came to Copenhagen. Uh, lots of heads of states and so on. So we are very little, like a small country, fair tape country. So um, a lot of input. And uh, what I thought was, was extremely interesting was there was a lot of political discussions obviously going on um, within the sort of plenum of, of United Nations. Um, and then there was a lot of scientists in town, very exciting. Um, with a lot of information and statistics. Um, but at the side, you obviously also have to think again of the business community. And I actually firmly believe that in order to move ahead and, and change um, and innovate new things, it will actually be the consumer that now hopefully will be more demanding and, and sort of vote with their wallets and say, we want products now that are sustainable. Mm -hmm. We actually want greener solutions. We don't want to pollute. Uh, and if you can get the consumers across the world to demand that, I'm sure the companies will actually respond because in the end of the day, that's how you also have a new market and you make money. Tina, thanks so much for taking the time to speak to us here. And I'm Edie Lutch here in the Hub Pavilion in Davos.